I still groped to find out why his face evoked a memory, and I drew a blank. After time, a man had no room for thought. The elements took possession of us all. Then we came to a bridge slung across a gorge, and I thought we'd come to journey's end. I rested with the others in the lee of an overhang while Paul and Ali went forward to inspect it. The wind gathered strength somewhere in the upper reaches of that gorge and rushed down with the speed of an express train, swaying the bridge, clawing at it. You should wait before crossing. You yourself said we must hurry. The wind is no respecter of time. Is it impossible to cross now? It's not impossible, but dangerous. We must cross. My men will not expect me to give the word until the wind drops a little. Passing now may be dangerous, but to delay near the border will be worse. Perhaps. The bridge itself is safe, is it not? It is strong, yes. So the only fear is that the wind may sweep him in from it. Only a fool does not recognize danger. Ali, cross. If we do not appear on time, the whole of this journey may have been for nothing. Oh, very well. Ali. Wait. Yes. He is suspicious. And Conyon? He would have spoken before now. Would he? Would he not think it better to take us both at the border? He has no legal rights here. But if he is what I think... An agent? I think you are wrong. I cannot take that chance. What plans do you dream up now? The bridge is dangerous. If you were to be swept off it... If anyone, anyone... With an accident crossing the gorge, my men will see the caravan is cursed. And that will be an end to it. They will go back. But if we could only take the right steps. Or take one step at a time. No more. It is all a man can do on the high roof. The settlement where Ali had chosen to trade was on the shores of a frozen river. Remnants of a wall encircled it, though it was hard to believe there was anything here worth attacking. There was a hostelry for the caravans that came so far east, and a sense of permanence, despite the remoteness of the place. It was dark when we wound our way through the streets, and braziers glowed red with fire, while across the river, white lights stabbed every now and again at the icy sky. What are those lights? The lights are in Russia. They man their borders night and day. Even here? As you say. I shouldn't have thought there was much here to watch. Some of the precious stones that are traded in this town are mined just across the border. The Russians don't like that. Ah. I suppose there's a severe penalty for smuggling. With the aid of nature, yes. I think you'd better explain that. If the Russians catch just such a smuggler, they release him in winter and beyond the town. But a man would die of exposure. Precisely, Ben Conyon. But surely the Russians have no jurisdiction here? Not legally, no. But their spies are everywhere. And don't the townspeople help men treated that way? Many try, or should say, have tried. Now it is better not to know. Helping such men triggered off accidents. Shooting accidents? Yes, for which our neighbors would apologize after the men were dead. What about your government? Here you are a long way from Kabul. You suppose there are any Russians in the place tonight? I hope not. You said that fervently enough. I am not always compatible with Russians. And what about Paul? Paul is different. Only part Russian. And we met many years ago when he visited Kabul. Why on earth do you come so far to trade? Because distances are in my blood. And the stones and furs and woolen cloth here are the finest in Afghanistan. Well, the place seems busy enough. Mm. Two caravans came in ahead of us, and both larger than mine. I thought I saw some Chinese. It is probable. Russia, China, Pakistan, the borders are all around us. It is an international town. With the Soviet floodlighting the border, who's fooling who, Ali? Ali's face darkened. He bade me an abrupt good night, not at all his usual courteous self. I found myself in a corner of the hostelry, amid the snoring cameleers. And though I couldn't see them, for there were no windows in the place, I was conscious of those Russian searchlights eternally stabbing, probing. Once, it must have been towards dawn, I went outside, unable to stand the fetid atmosphere any longer, and stood for a few seconds in the deserted street, 
and I wondered why it seemed so impossibly dark. It wasn't until I was back in the caravanserai that I realized why. The Russian searchlights had ceased their vigil. Wake up, Ben Conyon. Hmm? We move now. <sighs> now? It's not even light. And what about your trading? My trading is finished. And Paul? Paul already awaits with the others. Why the change of plans? It was necessary. Oh, for heaven's sake, we're not even rested. Your camel is laden already. It is time to make the return journey. Well, count me out. You cannot join any other caravan. It is not permitted. Now, look. Must I brute you to action like my other cavaliers? You're getting tough all of a sudden, aren't you, Ali? Come! Ali yanked me unceremoniously to my feet, held out the thick felt boots, which I'd only just discarded, and I thrust my feet into them. I was angry and I was tired. The thought of the return journey was a joyless one. He pulled me outside, and now the street, far from being quiet, was full of shouting, and I could hear Paul's voice. You are wrong, I tell you, wrong. I came with the caravan from Kabul. And the woman? What is this about a woman? If I come here to seek a wife, whose business is it but mine? We have reason to the think people that... people in this town have neither thought nor reason. If my wives at home cannot give me sons, why should I not seek one who can? You move out early. To reach the pass before dark. A woman cannot travel fast. Move! Move! Wait! You want a man. Take this man. Only for Pete's sake. He's picked up my caravan less than five miles north, and he carries the jewels from across the border. You lying son of... Genghis Khan! Search him! He lies in English and has the mind of a serpent, and he mines in Russian territory. I can disprove that. Search him. Ali. He's no business of ours, and my wife grows cold with waiting. If you had not been so insistent on buying a wife here, we might not be in this trouble now. The fairest women in Afghanistan come from this corner of the earth, and she was promised to me when she was a child. I could hear their voices under the cold stars like voices in a dream. The reality was three men bearing down on me, tearing at my clothing, ripping my pockets, and finding a great handful of uncut gems that must have been worth a king's ransom, and not one of which I'd seen before. And I remembered how Ali had yanked me to my feet, crowded me. He must have planted them on me then. The camel train moved off, and I was left with the Russian agents. Half naked, or so it felt, and chattering with the cold. It's days since the last camel caravan left the town. And no more are expected for another year. Soon it'll be my turn to be thrown beyond the walls. But I shall be alone, and on foot, and no one makes a move to help. And why should they? It's better not to know about men like me. <laughs> Paul was right. I should have kept to some balmy Pacific Isle. Paul. Oh, I think I know now who he was. Do you feel now that we have been successful? Now I know that we have been. Yes. You have your daughter out of Russia at last. But it was a near thing. I did not think there would be so many agents in the town. Oh, it is often so when the caravans go in. It took years of planning. Years. And now you will seek security in the West. Untroubled by conscience. Should I be troubled by conscience? What a pain. You planted this stuff on him, not I. You made him the sacrificial lamb. I had no choice. But now... Now? You can journey back to Kabul and beyond. I go back to the pass and beyond. <laughs> you must be mad. A man like you has his own loyalties. A man such as I has his. You have a great brain to bequeath to the western world, but Allah will smile on he who saves life. Ben will have perished long ago. Perhaps not. He had endurance. Yes. You took your time, I. 
I knew they would not fling you out until the last of the cameliers had gone. Uh, well, if you think I have the strength to ride across the roof of the world... You have the strength, then, Conyon. <laughs> I'd like to see spring in the Hindu Kush. You probably will. You fixed me proper, Ali. Signed my death warrant. Why? For the sake of Paul and his daughter. Russians, both. You were right about that. I remember. His work on disease that could revolutionize the medical world. He tried to impart his knowledge to the West. He escaped, and they held his daughter hostage. And he said he couldn't speak until she was free. I thought you weren't compatible with Russians. I am not compatible with Russians. Only with men. <laughs> Let's go. I was a wreck when Ali picked me up. And if all that was high adventure, I thought it was for the birds. I often wondered why he'd come back for me, tough leader of men that he was. But it was weeks before I asked him. And by then, the high passes were behind us. What on earth made you come back for me, Ali? Merely to avenge the insult you hurled at me? Insult? You called me a lying son of Genghis Khan. Oh. It angered me. I wanted you to eat those words, to become beholden to me, as you are. <laughs> High Adventure is produced by Anne Freed and directed by Henry Diffenthal. Take one man with an iron sense of justice. Put him in a lonesome canyon with a desperate killer. That's our story, Trail's End, taken from the files of John Steele, adventurer. Friends, this is John Steele. If you like stories of suspense and action, you've come to the right place. Because our specialty is curling hair and wearing out the edges of seats. This week's tale takes us out to the empty prairies of the far west, where a good friend of mine lived a very absorbing story. I first met George Brennan when I was managing the White Swan Cafe out in Silverton. But here he is to tell you about it himself. George? I guess being sheriff's about the most thankless job a man could ask for. Don't make no difference how good you are at it. Seems there's always someone talking behind your back or taking offense at something you've done. At least that's the way it was in my county. I'd been sheriff of Dawson County for 15 years. Good one, too. I always believed there was a right and a wrong to everything, and all you had to do was recognize them as was good and them as was bad. That's the way I ran things. Seems strange, though, that for all my years as sheriff, there wasn't a man in the county I could call a friend. You take that night a while back, I dropped into the White Swan just to check up before calling it a day. Hello, John. Uh, oh, hello, George. Everything quiet? <laughs> yeah, all under control. I just thought I'd I know. Say. Yeah. Well, this is where most of the trouble starts in the town, you know. Oh, I wouldn't go that far. Take my word for it. I know. <laughs> okay, have it your way. 
Care for a drink? Yeah, I guess I got time. May? May, want to get the sheriff a drink? 